Today, we're off to Paris. I think it's one of the great paintable cities of the world with the beautiful buildings, marvelous gardens, and I think we'll combine them both and see what I can come up with. But let's see how I go. Okay, I'm gonna have to really be on my game for this one. And I do like to sort of go for one of those dark areas. I think the success of this one is the dark roof, that shadow on this roof up against the sky. I think that's where the the painting will start. That's where we'll really get that uh, tonal contrast bounce. I never actually used to paint backlit scenes or the other name is looking into the light scenes. It's not a full blown one, but it's close to a backlit scene. Mainly because being a colorist, they, they always seemed a little on the dull side, a little cold. And But once I sort of worked out an approach, and a lot of times with painting, there's not just one approach that one person's invented. There's numerous approaches within the rules, the laws, the, the whole sort of general idea of painting. So we can fashion things to a way that will work for us and that works visually. So now I've got that big brush. It's a hog hair brush. I do love the, the long flats. It's got that square edge. I'm constantly wiping it to keep that edge nice and clean and sharp. And that's where the little stiff synthetics are great as well. They really come into their strength when we're working wet in wet, when the paint's fairly wet, especially at the early parts and, and then towards the end. I find uh, this brush to be really handy. So just trying to get some of that sensation of the tree there. It's probably the hardest part of the whole painting to paint actually because it is actually quite strong and I don't really need too much visual interest or power from it. So I'll be aiming to ultimately play it down because with the rooftop, that big shadow and light, the um, little statuey sort of fountain statue in the foreground and then when I put the a water fountain in that mid distance on the left that's kind of plenty the uh, trees more to stop the eye wanting to get out the, out of that right hand side so now really is a good time to to get this sky in so plenty of paint on the brush because i think one of the especially with the backlit scene one of the things that we end up tending to do is put the value in or get the paint onto the board a little too dark. We're better off losing colour but keeping it light, keeping that light value there. That's more important than any colour in the sky, even though that little touch of blue sky in the top really does enhance the sky. And I find this type of building, it's always best to underplay the detail especially at this distance it's quite a or might be sort of 80 to 100 yards meters away so we don't really need too much and this is a little bit of reflected light onto the glass windows i rather do enjoy painting foliage i have to admit it's something that has been a, a work in progress ever since i first started uh, a, a tree years ago would have barely been as big as the nail on my thumb there. That would have been a big tree for me um, 35 years ago. I used to just do sort of vistas with lots of little trees. Okay, and this is quite a an important area as well because it's going to sit in front of the the building. We'll be able to really sort of use this layering system of 
sky, the main big building, the foliage, the grass area in behind, that statue, sort of big vase statue that I'm sort of just getting in now. So then see how by coming in nice and light up against that concrete sort of statue, fountain statue there, that's creating more depth, more power. And then the ultimate really is the uh, fountain or that statue. I haven't really settled on a name for that thing. Uh, maybe the French do have a name for them. But, um, and even though I've been to France, I think five or six times, um, unfortunately my French is only about as good as grade eight French, but I'll certainly look forward to the opportunity to practicing a little more. See how I've got to be careful that that to me is looking a little dark in the trunk. So that's something that, uh, I may sort of revisit. Because that's the thing with all those lights in behind there. It's quite easy to have it or get it sort of jumping out too much and just pulling focus. I do find my paintings are highly orchestrated. I do. Sometimes you don't really need to think about them too much. You just instantly recognize and that's always a good day. But other subjects, they do take planning, organization, that's why I like to think of it as my research and development stage. That's when I'm planning what may go wrong, what may go right, which areas may I have trouble with. And I, I normally don't leave uh, that for the last. Uh, I think I more like to leave the, the main, one of the main primary focal areas. So whether it was a cow, I'd sort of work on the, the head and the face to get that as strong as possible and as accurate as possible. So normally when you're coming and putting highlights and I'm using my smallest little liner type brush, or I think this one may be a um, Taclon liner, but you can buy them there. They're sort of that white fiber synthetic sort of brush, the little liners. They're marvellous for putting in little dots and dashes. Here we go with that fountain. One of the big dangers was not making it just a big straight vertical shape and breaking it up. And there must have been a slight little breeze, I think, to the left because it, you could see a little bit of spray sort of going to that left-hand side. And you may notice that I've sort of going back into areas that you may have thought that I have uh, finished up. I don't really work in an a la prima process. I'm more like a direct impressionist working on ideas right in front of me. Well, that was great fun. It's always a challenge, city scenes. And I think my one big takeaway is to, with this type of lighting and the backlit scene, is try and find a subject or incorporate a warmish foreground because we're always gonna be dealing with cooler colors, cooler values, greys, blues. So by having that foreground grass, that really did warm and give me nice natural depth. So thanks for watching, all the best.